Hello, welcome to this introduction to live coding made with the Sheffield Creative Guild. Um, they asked me to make a video introducing you to some of the technology and history of live coding, which is a creative practice um, where people write computer programs as part of the performing arts. Um, so what is live coding? I guess an uh, easy way of putting it is it is something where you make art by writing rules that are changed while you follow them. Usually it's actually a computer that is following the rules and the artist that is writing them. Um, and usually that's in the form of source code. Um, maybe that didn't really make much sense. So let's have a look at an example. Um, this is um, a band called Type um, with Lucy, Ryan and Laurie. They work together um, writing code to make music with a language called Foxdot. You can see Lucy there, she was performing in Japan while Ryan and Laurie were home in Yorkshire. Um, actually, Ryan was in Leicester. Um, so they're working together in this code, working on it together, it's like network music um, and making some really nice chilled out techno. I guess the important thing here is that the code is a medium between them and the music. They're describing the music, um, they're making changes, listening to those changes and then deciding what happens next. Here's another example, this one by a duo um, in Amsterdam called Code Clavier, um, also known as Off Said Said. Um, so this is quite a different kind of thing. So Anne here is playing the piano. Actually, she's using a piano as a kind of keyboard, uh, as in she's typing code on it. Um, but in a very musical way, so that's quite a strange approach to live coding. And you find that people are really pushing the boundary of what um, live coding is all the time. It's kind of live coding itself in a way. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, another thing um, that is pretty popular in live coding is called Algorave. So this is something that um, I helped start um, quite a few years ago where we actually write code to make dance music. Um, type at Algorave people as well as other things, for example. This is me and my friend Sam working at an Algorave in Blue Dot Festival near Manchester um, with uh, another friend um, called Rituals, also Dan Hecht. This is his real name, but um, he's actually live coding the visuals there, you can see. And me and Sam are um, live coding and working a drum machine. There's my code behind, you can see it projected so that people in the audience can follow along if they want, um, or they can hopefully just dance and listen to it. Um, this feels really nice, so there's something really special, I think, about writing code to make people dance. It's like a very physical thing and at the same time a very abstract thing. The code is very abstract of course but um, you also get this very physical feedback from the sound system um, and the people moving in front of you. It's like a full body experience and I really recommend it. Okay, um, let's actually try and write some code. So this system here is called Hydra it's for making visuals. It's written by an artist um, called Olivia Jack, who is based um, at the moment, I think, in Berlin um, or in Bogota. I'm not quite sure where she is at the moment, but um, let's try and write some code. So I can make a nice oscillator. Um, I'm not the world's best person at Hydra, but I'll do my best. Let's see what this does. Okay, so we have some nice colors going. I can change that, of course. Um, I can rotate that a bit. Uh, if I can type properly. Okay. 
Um, so then I can start doing things like maybe changing that or this. So I just work with it until I find something I like. Um, that's interesting. But maybe if I also blend that with something else like this. Uh, slightly different. Okay, now it's starting to be a bit strange. Uh, maybe if I pixelate that. Ooh, okay. So you get the idea. It's um, It just works in the web browser, you can see. Just go to this web address and then you can start playing. There's loads of examples you can explore. You have to be a bit careful, like if you have photosensitive epilepsy, then maybe steer clear. It's very easy to get very flashy effects, which might not be a great idea in that case. Um, so that's Hydra. Uh, another system that runs in the web browser, so it's super easy to use, is called Jibber. This is for either visuals or sound or both. You can do both if you're hardcore. Um, this is an example. Just plays nice drum sound. Uh, and there's one here um, which is actually written by a local band a uh, legendary band called 65 Days of Static. They made a track and it's actually one of the demos now and you can run it and have a listen. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, have a good listen to that one. It actually lasts forever though, so you might be a little while. But um, yeah, it's nice that a, an actual band has come along and picked up these tours and see, see and taken them interesting places. Okay. So um, my personal journey with live coding started around the year 2000. Um, and over the last 10 years, I've been working on a system called Tidal Cycles, which I'll show you now. <coughs> so Tidal um, is really based around the idea of algorithmic pattern. So this is pattern as in um, the idea of pattern in textiles, where you take different um, elements like sequences and mix them together using pattern operations like symmetry, reflection, interference between different parts um, to um, come up with weird patterns. Um, I can show you some examples, that's probably for the best. So let's start off with uh, a nice mandolin sound and maybe play just a C. Okay, so that'll just play in the background forever. And but I can change that a bit. So let's add in some more notes, maybe make them a bit longer. Maybe add a bit more rhythm. So this is a little um, language within Tidal uh, called the mini notation. And you can use this for all kinds of sequences like um, uh, here I'm doing something called a Euclidean sequence. But you can also make polyrhythms and add in randomness and um, uh, all kinds of things, sort of weird time signatures. Um, let's keep it fairly straightforward for now, though. So that sounds kind of interesting. Um, I can add a layer on top of that. This is called a canon, where you um, uh, just have one melody, a version of a melody following itself. So. I think if I slow this down, it'll sound much more interesting. Okay. I'll add another layer on top to go up an octave, I think. Nice thing to do always is Jux Rev, which will reverse the cycles, the sequences but um, only in one speaker, so you get a nice effect if you're listening on headphones or something like that. Okay. So yeah, I'm just playing around, sort of layering things up, combining different functions, and very quickly it becomes quite complex. I can do this with uh, drum sounds as well. Add a clap and another kick. So even with quite a simple sequence like that, I can start adding other functions on top. Like here, I'm chunking that 
into quarters and then speeding up successive parts. It's, yeah. You can kind of hear what's going on. Uh, and again, I could juxtapose that if I wanted. Or I could, every third repetition, make it really kind of distorted. Let's see, let's try. Yeah, you can get pretty strange, pretty strange pretty quickly. Um, you can work with longer samples as well. This is a little break beat. Again, I can start manipulating that. Backwards. Add that on top. Always good to have a bit of reverb. Um, so that's just very quickly showing you a few things in Tidal. Um, it's free to download, it takes a bit longer, you have to install different things. Um, it's not quite as easy as Jibber or Hydra, but it's still very quick to get into. Like I've been doing workshops with eight-year-olds in groups and getting them making music together within an hour. So this is not anything that you should think of as difficult. It's not like software engineering. These tools are made for making uh, stuff with very quickly and it's very easy to get involved but then there's also a lot of depth because there's so many different ways of combining these different structures these different functions that you'll be um yeah making music till the end of time hopefully um so i really encourage you to get involved um i'm going to be starting a running a course um it, at the moment while i speak it's the start of april uh, 2020 and I'll be uh, starting the course mid-April. Um, so you uh, and there's information about that and all, all the things I've shown, lots of other links in the description of this video. Um, so I really hope this uh, gives you some motivation and information for getting involved in live coding. Um, this is something which anyone should be able to get involved with um, and hope to see you performing at a future Algorave once we're allowed out. So. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.